Luke from the future here. My audio was corrupted and unusable at this point, meaning I have no real introduction. However, I will give you a brief summary of what I said. Blah blah blah, look where I am, blah blah blah, how did I get here, blah blah blah, come with me to find out. Having just entered the country, and with my onward domestic boarding pass in hand, I made my way swiftly to the domestic terminal. Port Moresby is the capital and largest city of Papua New Guinea, located in the southeastern corner of the island of New Guinea, which PNG shares with Indonesia. There is only a single airport that serves the city, that being Port Moresby Jackson's International Airport. From here you can fly to 9 international destinations, and expectedly, all 20 domestic airports in Papua New Guinea can be reached from here including that of Kaviang, which is a small fishing village to the north. And if you couldn't guess from the video title, this is where we shall be flying to today, via Hoskins. The domestic terminal is a three minute walk from the international terminal. There are manned check-in counters for Air New Guinea, PNG Air, which are the main two domestic carriers here. As I already had my boarding pass, there was no need to visit the counters. Post security, which by the way is directly behind the check-in area, I proceeded down a short hallway towards the large waiting room which has ample seating, but unfortunately barely any of it was available. The reason for this was unclear the moment I walked through, but as I checked the departures board, I realised almost all flights had been delayed by nearly one and a half hours. Eventually, it was time for my flight to board just over two hours behind schedule, and it commenced at Gate Charlie. Stepping out onto the ramp, I had absolutely no clue what aircraft I was going to be boarding today. I knew it was going to be a Fokker aircraft, but which one will it be? Following the crowd, I eventually turned left and got my first head-on look at today's aircraft, which is a Fokker 70, registered as Papa 2 Alpha November Uniform. She was built in 1995 in the Netherlands, being delivered initially to British Midland Airways under Golf Bravo Victor Tango Echo. She then moved to KLM under Papa Hotel Kilo Zulu Oscar in 2002. She was then finally given to Air New Guinea in 2016, where she currently remains, making this aircraft 29 years old. Air New Guinea's Fokker 70s are in a two-class configuration with eight business class seats in a 2-2 layout and 65 economy class seats in a 2-3 layout. This afternoon I shall be seated in 9 Golf, just forward of the overwing exits. The economy class seat has 31 inches of pitch and 17 inches of width. There is a standard tray table that folds down and extends. In the seat pocket you'll find a safety card and an air sickness bag. Above are individual air vents, reading lights and a flight attendant call button. Soon, the engines fired up for our flight north, two hours and seven minutes behind schedule. We taxied to runway 14 left via Alpha. Now, please enjoy this unedited takeoff.
Once airborne, we spun around over the southerly suburbs of Port Moresby, setting a northerly course for Hoskins. Flight time for the first leg is one hour, covering a distance of 543 miles or 874 kilometers, cruising at 27,000 feet. Once airborne, we flew directly past Cape Killerton in the Oro province on the northern side of the island, which will be the only piece of land visible until descent. After which, the crew began the in-flight service, to which I was handed a pack of shortbread biscuits and a cup of orange juice. Soon we commenced our descent into Hoskins. As we passed under the top of the cloud layer and saw the island below, my first thought was that of disappointment as I thought this approach wasn't going to be as breathtaking as I had been told it would be. However, I spoke too soon as the views reminded me that of the island from Jurassic Park with the stunning Mount Mullerless just off to the right and the flat calm Bismarck Sea to the north. Now please enjoy this unedited landing. After landing, we backtracked down runway 30 towards the terminal building. We pulled into gate 1 an hour and 5 minutes behind our scheduled arrival time. Before we continue onwards, let's talk a little bit about where we just landed. Located on the northern coast of the island of New Britain, Hoskins Kimbe Airport is the primary airport serving the towns of Kimbe and Cape Hoskins. This area has generally been left relatively untouched by modern day standards. You can do many activities here, but the most notable are hiking, snorkeling and fishing. This area, however, has had a significant history, playing a strategic role during World War II in the Asia-Pacific region. The airfield was built and used by the Japanese in 1943, up until March 1944, when Allied aircraft bombed and captured the base. Nowadays, the airport is used by Air New Guinea and PNG Air for passenger services to Leh, Port Moresby, Rabaul and Kaviang which is the next and final stop of the day. So let's continue onward. Not long after our arrival, the two Rolls-Royce Tay 62015 turbofan engines restarted an hour behind our scheduled departure time.
be taxied to runway 30 via runway 12. Now please enjoy this unedited takeoff. Once airborne, we turned left and right over Stettin Bay, setting a northerly course for Kaviang. Flight time for the second leg is 37 minutes, covering a distance of 208 miles or 336 kilometers, cruising at 23,000 feet. After turning away from the island, we got a good look at the airport we just departed from and the nearby mountain of Lolo, which sits 6,700 feet above sea level. On board the aircraft are two bathrooms, both located at the rear, which were incredibly loud and have everything you'd typically expect to find in an economy bathroom, including a baby changing station. As quickly as the flight started, we soon commenced our descent into Kaviang. Due to the lateness of the day, barely anything was visible outside, excluding the wing which was of course illuminated by the landing lights. This all changed as we began our final runway alignment turn, which revealed the last remnants of light over the village, which was absolutely stunning. Now please enjoy this unedited landing. After landing, we taxied back to the terminal via Alpha to Gate 2. We pulled into the gate, 57 minutes behind our scheduled arrival time. As I stepped off the aircraft, blissfully unaware of the absolutely fantastic night that was about to happen in town, I made my way inside the terminal building. Flying on board Air New Guinea domestically was an interesting experience to say the least. Their hospitality and friendliness on board was incredible, and the food was, well, it was about what I expected. The same cannot be said for the ground experience, was a complete shit show. Flying to Kaviang via Hoskins gave me a rare opportunity to see a small village and scenery that I genuinely would have never seen had I chosen to fly to a different airport, which was the original plan. However, after doing some research about PNG, it's probably for the best that I avoided this mountain cities like Mount Hagen and stick to smaller villages where I was less likely to be robbed. Thank you so much for watching this video. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment and subscribe. Make sure to check out the other videos I have on my YouTube channel. And also, I now have a Discord server. Feel free to join, link at the top of the description. And don't forget to ring that notification bell if you enjoy my content. And if you want to see more, I post my videos every single Friday at 8pm Sydney time. And I hope to see you again in the next one. See you later!